Hi everyone and welcome back to the shack and in this episode we'll be taking a quick look at this Atari 1050 disk drive which was donated to the shack by Phil along with the Atari 800XL which we just brought back to factory fresh. There's a link on the screen if you want to watch those episodes first. This particular 1050 has quite a major problem though. You can't insert a disk, it simply won't go in. Let's see if we can find out why. Unlike more modern CD or Blu-ray drives, there's no electrical or electronic component involved in inserting and removing a floppy from most of these old drives. There's a mechanical latch and some springs to lift and shift things around, and to eject the disc enough for your fingers to grab it when you want to remove them. So I'm confident that this will be a simple mechanical problem, and with all of the screws removed, there are six in total, we can see the inside of the unit. And there she is, the Tandon floppy drive on top with all of the motors and mechanics and underneath we can see the main board for the unit which we'll take a look at a little later on. So now we can see the mechanism, let's see what's happening when we try to put a disc in. Well it's fairly clear to see that the plastic unit that holds the read and write heads isn't opening up to accept the disc. If we lift it manually the disc slides all the way in. Turning the locking latch clamps the disc in place, but when we release the latch, the disc doesn't spring back out. The heads aren't lifted clear of the drive and the disc gets caught on the way out too, and you have to manually lift the heads to release the disc. Now this took me a minute to see, but when I saw it, I had a real dog moment. Have you spotted it? Let's look in more detail. When you insert a disc, it pushes this little spring-loaded bar back towards the rear of the unit, which in turn should lift this metal element here, which in turn should lift the plastic unit that holds the read and write heads. But it isn't, because the plastic lever of the head unit is underneath the metal and not on top. If you look closely, you can see the wear mark on the metal where this piece of plastic has been moving back and forth over the years. Now, I'm not at all sure how this could have happened accidentally, and it looks like it might have been the result of someone having a go at dismantling and reassembling the drive at some point, and just putting it back together incorrectly. Perhaps if you're watching Phil, you can let me know if this is something you recall when you had the unit. In any case, it's a simple matter of carefully popping that bit of plastic back around to the top, and we should have a working mechanism. So let's grab ourselves a disc and give it a test. Well, mechanically, that seems fine. Disc goes in, disc comes out. Now, I know absolutely nothing about Atari DOS, so I managed to grab myself one of these 1050 manuals from eBay. And it's an interesting read, although don't let the size of the manual fool you into thinking it's massively in-depth. It's about 10 pages of information duplicated into lots of different languages. It fails to mention, for example, anything about these switch settings which set the drive number, but Google came to the rescue there. A quick visual inspection of the capacitors in the unit shows no signs of leaking or any bulges and some people say only recap if necessary, then others say always recap to be sure. I'm going to leave them for now because, well, I'm impatient to see if this thing actually works. I am, however, going to give the heads a little clean with some IPA while I'm here. Right, should we give it a go? For this initial test, I've chosen a disc that appears to have Jet Set Willy on it, one of the most famous games ever made for the ZX Spectrum, and one that's been converted to most 8-bit machines over the years, but I've never seen it running on an Atari 8-bit, so this will be new to me. The 1050 disk drive has a fairly fast stock transfer speed, at least compared to that of the stock 1541 disk drive for the Commodore 64, please, no haters. To put things into perspective, the stock Commodore 1541 drive has a transfer rate of 2400 board, or 300 bytes per second, compared to the 19200 board, or 2400 bytes per second of the Atari unit. 
Of course, the C64 had all sorts of fast loaders, both hardware and software, which attempted, mostly successfully, to alleviate the problem. For Atari users, there were hardware modifications available for the drive itself, such as the Happy 1050 enhancement, which claimed a 500% increase in read speed over the standard drive. In order to get a feel for this, I've left Jet Set Willy loading in real time in the background so we can get a feel for standard load time for a game, if there is such a thing. And in this instance, going by the on-screen countdown, you've probably already figured out that we managed to load Jet Set Willy on the Atari 800XL from a standard 1050 drive in just one minute. And that doesn't seem too bad at all. I don't have a working 1541 drive at the moment, so if any of you out there have got one and have Jet Set Willy on disc, I'd be interested to know how long it takes to load, so let me know in the comments. This is all subjective of course, as it's a different code base and an entirely different game. I mean, on the Atari, this is supposed to be Minor Willy. Hmm. Anyway, this sort of comparison formed the basis of what I call playground debate, when we kids would get together and discuss our experiences and effectively play top trumps with our specifications. Yeah, your 64 might have blah blah blah, but my Spectrum has yada 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 and so on. Luckily, these days we're past all that, aren't we? Anyway, only a quick episode this week, as I'm currently producing the channel's Christmas special and one year anniversary. Yes, in December the channel will be one year old, and it's been quite a year, and I'm hoping to close out with something really special that I hope you'll enjoy. In the next episode in this series, I'll be doing a full teardown, investigation and refurb of this 1050, a recap and hopefully installing one of those amazing turbo boosters for the drive. We'll also finally get around to having a look at this S-Drive Max unit, which allows you to emulate four drives on your Atari 800 with absolutely perfect accuracy. There'll be more details when to expect that and other things we've got lined up for early next year in our Christmas special. Thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this little update. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications of new content. Please leave your comments below as we always love to read them. And if you've got anything you'd like to donate and see featured on the channel, please drop us an email. If you'd like to support us, there are links on the banner on the main channel page. So until next time in the Retro Shack, it's goodbye from me.